Hi, Yarnabees. Special guest appearance by Crochet B. Without Sandy. Anyway, um, as a lot of you know, I've, we've discussed this before. Um, craft fair season is coming up. And after two years of there not being a whole lot of craft fairs, um, I want to get us in as many craft fairs as we possibly can, um, you know, to make money. And also, you know, Sandy's been crocheting and making things and, and whatever. So Sandy uh, is in a bit of a panic mode because we've now signed up for probably the two biggest craft fairs we're going to do, both four-day craft fairs. And I want to get some other craft fairs done. And uh, the problem that we run out, we run into is... I can sell this stuff a lot faster than Sandy can make it. So we did a four day craft fair in Duncan and we sold so much stuff that she is terrified of, of not having enough stock made. So I told her I wanted to find a way that I could help her, help her with that. So, um, you know, unfortunately I'm not able to crochet because I have the world's biggest hands. I can't do this. Um, but we thought we looked at, um, at the, at the Addy type machines, and we thought uh, we could maybe give that a try. So we went, uh, we bought a, a Centro and tried that and had absolutely nothing but troubles. We were dropping stitches like crazy. We couldn't seem to figure it out. Um, it was very, very frustrating. Um, and then, um, you know, we were, we were talking to people in the community and stuff like, what do you think? What should we do? And it turns out that our dear friend, Sandy Duda, uh, which is Sandy's sister from another mister, that's what I like to call her, had an Addy machine that she bought and has not used and was not going to use. And she actually gave that to us. So very, very nice, very generous. I know they're very expensive. Uh, we've tried it on the Addy machine, and with a little trial and error, uh, I think we've got this figured out so that we've got this down pretty good. So the goal I had, I put a goal out for myself that I was going to make 100 hats before the start of craft fair season and uh, to help with enough stock. And I already have over 20 done. I didn't think I had this much done. Because uh, I've not been doing it as regularly. I was planning on doing like two a night and go, go, go. And just a lot of things with work and dashing and everything. We haven't been able to do it. But I have made some. I'm going to show you. Um, because people have all been saying in the comments, please show us uh, what Crochet B makes or whatever. So I do want to show you. So Sandy will insert a little video in here somewhere of me uh, doing it. So what happened is we have a table set up. And we discovered that if we turned it upside down, uh, the machine actually sits nicely in the legs and doesn't move around as much as when we had it on top of the table. You can get them and try to clamp them down, but it's still not ideal. But this was the absolute perfect setup because it sits in there perfect. It doesn't move and it gives you room for the yarn to just drop into the space. Because one of the reasons we were dropping stitches is the yarn was bunching up and we were constantly having to try to move it in so that it wouldn't put any pressure on and anyways i think we've got it down pretty good so i'm just going to show you some of the some of the ones that i've made or all of the ones that i've made i guess and uh, you can tell me what you think so we started out um just making some that are just one color which is a lovely red what we've noticed when we go to the craft fairs is anything we make that's either red black or white seems to sell and you have to imagine every one of these hats is going to have our wooden um, crochet a canada label on so that they'll know it's a genuine crochet a hat in a perfect world it would be crochet b canada because crochet b you know anyway so we started doing just single colors like that and then we got some multicolored yarn and we came up with uh, stuff like this which I think are came out quite nice. And we were going to put pom-poms on, but Sandy's not really liking the pom-poms. So some have some, some don't. Um, and then we had some that was basically just a, a two-tone. So white with the, with the trim, like so. And then we did another one that I really liked. Um, 
we had some sort of sparkly kind of yarn. So you can see it's kind of reflective and sparkly, which I really like. And this one with the pom-pom, I like the pom-pom. So we're still going to have to discuss how the pom-pom thing is going to work. Um, and then this is another one that we made that I really, that I made. So basically I do the majority, I do all the cranking and the majority of stuff. And then Sandy does all the fine, the fine finishing at the end. So in reality, it is really the two of us, but I'm doing most of the work, taking a lot of the work away from Sandy. And some of them we made were, are a little bigger. So this may end, actually turn into a slouchy because um, we're, we, it took us a bit to figure out how many rows of the different types of yarn there's another one that's got the, the little sparklies in there that maybe you can, can see that as well. And this is one that I really like. Look at the colors in this one. So I've got this down. There's another sparkly. Right. So the idea is, I and mean, this is one of my favorites too. Look at the colors on this guy. So I thought that came out well. So I was really quite surprised when I got looking. I didn't think I'd hardly made anything until I went down and I started. Um, this is the one that I just made today. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? If you feel it, it's, it's still warm. Yeah. Um, but I actually have over 20 made already. So I may be well, well over 100 by the time. And actually went out yarn shopping with Sandy and helped to pick out some of the yarn. And that was one of the other uh, things that we ran into was trying to figure out uh, which yarns are suitable. We find that if they're too thick, uh, like too wide, it's a bit of a problem. But ever since we've discovered um, the upside down table, I like this one too. Isn't that nice? Look at that. The upside down... Uh, table and letting it just fall freely it keeps uh, even tension the whole way down and this is another one where we switched it up and we put the, the black as the main body and then the multicolored brim just to give that as a bit of an idea so I'm finding that depending on on the yarn that I use I can get make three to four hats out of any given ball of yarn so again I like the multicolored ones seem to come out good. And if you can imagine with our nice little wooden label, how these are going to look, and then we'll have them on our heads, like when we always do the display. And I'm thinking, I don't know, we're trying to figure out, um, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't get $25 for one of these properly displayed with our nice label and everything. And some of them are quite thick and quite warm. Others are a little, are a little looser. Again, depending on, on the yarn. There's another one we just did this morning. And for some reason, I had this weird little white spot on the thread. I don't know why. When I was making it, I thought that I dropped a stitch. Because I go, what the heck is that? So, for the most part, it's gone. Like, we've, in the beginning, we struggled quite a bit with drop stitches. And I still make the occasional mistake. You know, I am new to this crafting thing. It's not something that I ever thought that I would ever would ever do but I'm quite proud of how these have come out but then Sandy gets a little exasperated sometimes with me when I make mistakes but I am I am still learning I didn't have the spirit of my mother enter my body like Sandy did that turned me into a master crafter uh, right from the get-go so again the sparkly yarn thing actually come out really nice too so so as you can see, these are basically them. And these are some of the ones we did first, just one color, just to kind of get the, the routine down. So, and again, a few, quite a few of these sort of rainbow guys. So anyway, and that's the last one. So you wanted to see, a lot of you wanted to meet, a, wanted to see some of my hats after I've made them and whatever. So as you can see, I've got quite a pile there. So um, I don't know if I can honestly say that I've caught 
the crafting bug. But I feel really good about being able to help Sandy with having uh, enough stock for the upcoming craft fair. So, so far, we've nailed down um, the same one we went into last year, which is Christmas Chaos in Duncan, which is a four-day craft fair. And we've sold more at that one craft fair than any craft fair we've done by far. And then there's one the following week, and it is also a four-day one. And that one is in Qualicum, which is another part of the island. And Qualicum is um, an area in the island where it's um, uh, lots of folks with lots of money and a lot and it's also older a lot of older people Qualicum is officially the oldest um, average age of resident lives in Qualicum BC than anywhere else in Canada well over 80 years old so uh, Qualicum is the only place in Canada where the golf carts actually go faster than the automobiles because of the way these guys drive it always drives me crazy when i go to qualicum so anyway so that's it i just wanted to give you a quick little tour of what i've been doing i'm going to be uh, working on so, some more today um because i'm home unexpectedly um so i'll get going on that and hopefully uh you guys like like what i've done so i don't know i think they've all come out pretty nice they're nice and thick they're nice and warm i'm sure they'll all go to a to a good home and Sandy is still crocheting hers as well. So in our display, we'll have the knitted hats and we'll have crochet hats and, of course, your sweaters and scarves and all the other wonderful things that the Queen of Crafts makes. And uh, hopefully we have a really good craft fair season coming up. So anyway, that's all I wanted to show you. So now you've got your update and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.